Hello, Cove Nation. I am coming to you from my house, my spare bedroom in my house. I've kind of turned into my office. Um, you could say I do a lot of work and just calls for work here. So, as some of you may have known, as you've seen in the email that I sent out to you all in the newsletter, this is how we are going to go about teaching from here on out. Um, I know in the past weeks we have been sending out to you guys um, orange curriculum videos for you to watch and discussion questions. But we decided, uh, Luke and I, the middle school director at the Lake Forest campus, we decided that it would be a better idea for us to record ourselves teaching lessons and that way you guys can see our faces and we can just enjoy getting back to teaching and doing what we love to do at Cove as well. So Luke and I have decided that we are first, our first topic or lesson series that we're going to teach everyone about is the subject of prayer. Now I know those of you who were able to make it out to my um, Cove Trivia Night this past Wednesday night, we talked about prayer. Um, and so we're going to continue into that now. And more specifically, we're going to talk about situations where we can pray and the certain prayers that we can pray in those situations. So what does the Bible say about when we can pray or what situations might prompt us to pray and the kinds of prayers that we can pray in those spots. So I'm excited to do this. It's a blessing to be able to still reach out to you all and have this opportunity. And also, if you are watching this video right now, since we're going to be doing this every week in more videos, if you would like me to give you a shout out or anything in future teaching videos, um, either contact me or have your parents contact me and say you'd, they would, you would like a shout out and I would be happy to do that in future weeks to make things fun. So like I said, we're talking about prayer and I think prayer is a very helpful topic for us to be discussing right now in this time in our society. A lot of people who haven't prayed before are starting to pray now because they're realizing just they need God's help. They need God. And like we talked about this past Wednesday, if you were able to make it out, God delights in hearing our prayers. There, there's never a day when we were to go to God in prayer and God would tell or say, I don't want to listen to you. I'm done with you. Get away from me. I, I want no part of that. Instead, every single time we come to God, he delights in hearing us. And as Christians, as the Hebrews 4.16 passage tells us from Wednesday, we can go to God with boldness and confidence, knowing that he wants to hear from us and we can get his attention, get his ear, and he will hear us. Even, even though he is, he is sovereign over everything on this earth, he can be paying attention to everything that's going on in this earth, and yet still be fully devoted to hearing you and hearing the things that you are praying. That is just a wonderful and amazing, amazing truth that can seep deep down in our hearts and just encourage us and give us strength in life in times like this, like this COVID-19 time that we are in. So the first Bible passage that we are going to go through in this video, um, or the Bible passage for this video, is Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And maybe some of you have read this before. Maybe you've heard it before. It's a very, very popular passage that talks about praying. And before I get into the passage itself, I just want to paint a picture for you all of what is going on when this passage was actually written. So as some of you may know or may not know, this passage was written by the Apostle Paul. Real quick, I'm just going to make sure my computer is good. All right, we're back. This passage was written by the Apostle Paul. As you know, he was, some of you may know, he was a great missionary, traveled the world, um, shared the gospel with many people, and he wrote letters to churches that he planted along the way to encourage them, to teach them, and make sure that they are standing fast in our faith or in their faith as Christians. And those letters, the truths of these letters and of this work can still apply to us today as believers because he wrote these letters to believers in the first place. So Paul, when he wrote this book of Philippians, he was actually in jail. He was in prison for sharing the gospel, for stirring up trouble in the eyes of the authorities because he was sharing the gospel. And as some of you may know, prisons back then are not like prisons today. I mean, no one wants to go to prison today anyway. But prisons back then were even worse. They were gross. They were, you know, they hardly got any food. They were, Paul was literally most likely chained to a wall. He had shackles on his hands and his feet, and he was up against a wall. And so it was a very miserable and hard, hard place to be. And so the situation we're going to address today that this passage addresses for us 
is a situation of being anxious or having anxiety. So Paul, in this time, as somebody who was chained up to a wall, was in prison, he had a lot of things to be anxious for. And he even says earlier on in the book that there were things that were making him anxious as he was in prison. And for us, I think anxiety is a very, very common experience for everybody today, even me. As I've shared with you guys and Cole before, in the past in my life, and even now to today, I still deal with anxiety. I still wake up in the morning anxious about certain situations or certain things I know that's coming, or I am a big schedule guy, so if something catches me off guard in a day and throws off my schedule, it can just cause a lot of anxiety and, and fear in me. So for a lot of us, anxiety is a common experience. It's when something you know is out of our control and we want to control it, but we, we know that we can't. That's usually when anxiety comes into our lives. And so... I say all that, now we can actually read the passage that Paul wrote. So here we go. Philippians 4, chapters 6 through 7. Here's what Paul says. He says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So it's very interesting. Right away, the first words that Paul says is, do not be anxious about anything. Now, when you hear that, you might think, what, what in the world, Paul? Like, how can I not be anxious for anything? I mean, I'm, I'm human. Anxiety is, is a natural and normal response. Why are you telling me to be anxious for nothing or do not be anxious about anything? Now, I think Paul didn't mean what he's saying. He's not, you know, trying to lie to us. But what, what he's getting at in order to understand it, we have to continue to read on the passage, and we'll get our answer as to why he would say that once we get to the end of this passage. But so, Paul is saying, he's, he's saying the scene, he's saying, when you're anxious or when anxiety comes into your life, what, what are you to do? What, what would God have you do? And here's what he says. He says, but in every situation, so in every situation that causes us anxiety, or even every situation of our lives, he says, by prayer and petition... Petition is basically another word for prayer. Petition would be like, you know, maybe you've, you've been asked to sign a petition before or adults sign petitions. My computer's acting weird again. So when you, when you were asked to sign a petition, it's mostly because somebody is asking for something, right? They want some kind of action to get done. And so when you petition God, you're basically asking God for something. So he says, when you're anxious in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to God. And so first of all, Paul is saying, when you're anxious, the first reaction you do is prayer and petition. So right away, go to God and talk to him about it. Like we talked about on Wednesday, prayer is simply telling God what's going on in your life, what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what's going on, and saying, God, I can't handle this on my own. I, I need you. I'm confessing my need for you, and I'm welcoming you into this circumstance situation in my life to work because I trust you. So he's saying that that is the, that can be the first reaction that we have. But he's saying it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop with us just saying, God, here's my situation. Do something about it. I'm scared. Instead, Paul goes even further and he says, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Now, why, why would Paul say with thanksgiving? Why, why do we have to kind of sprinkle our prayers and requests to God with some thanksgiving on top of it. Now, the reason why, I believe, is because when we are thankful, when we thank God for things, it reminds us of the past ways that God has worked in our lives or that God is continually working in our lives. An example from my life is even today, I woke up, it was a rainy day, and I had a lot of things I had to get done and do, and my natural reaction was just to get stressed, to get anxious, to think, man, today's going to be a bad day. I just, I'm just not going to be, not going to be feeling it, not going to be enjoying myself today. But we actually, as a church staff at, at Crossroads, we had a staff meeting today. And Pastor Aaron, as many of you know, encouraged all of us to pray a prayer of thanksgiving to God before we got into our meeting. And what that reminded me of is, man, God really is doing a lot of things in my life. And even though today I may have a lot to do and a lot going on, if God has done amazing and miraculous things for me in the past, 
What's going to stop him from doing amazing, miraculous things in the future? Or if I've had hard circumstances and hard situations in the past, and I've asked God to get me through it, and I've gotten through it, if he's worked in that way in the past, nothing's going to stop him from working that way in the future. And so that's why Paul is saying to sprinkle our, our prayers, our prayers and meditations, our requests to him, telling him what we're anxious about with thanksgiving. Because it reminds us, it fills our hearts with, with joy, knowing that God has worked in the past and that he will work in the future. And even the ancient Israelites, God's people in the Old Testament, they were constantly reminded to recall the works of God, recall the things that he has done for them, as a way of reminding them how great and wonderful he is and how he's worked on their behalf, to remind them that he is in control and that he can work in their lives. So then to finish in verse 7, there, there's the consequence of what happens when we pray to God about our anxieties, and we sprinkle that with thanksgiving, thanking the Lord. It says in verse 7, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So I know what a lot of you are thinking, and that's why what I sometimes think too when I read this passage. The peace of God, what, what is that? Or how do I experience it? Or does this mean that as soon as I pray, all of a sudden, bam, the peace of God is going to hit me right in the head, right in the brain, and I'm just going to feel okay about everything, and my life's going to get easier and better, and it's all good. And I know for some of you who have tried this before, who have tried praying to God in your times of anxiety, and asked Him to intervene, asked Him to work in your life, and you say amen, and you're like, where's my peace? What's going on? God, why haven't you worked like you said you would? And here's the thing. Here, here's what Paul is getting at here. The peace of God that transcends all understanding and guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, this is not peace as we think it would be. I think a lot of times we project things onto God saying, God, if you were to give me peace, here's what it'd be like, here's what it'd look like, so therefore do this for me right now. But when we do that, we limit the ways that God can work. And the peace of God, it says, this peace of God transcends all understanding. So it's not something we can give to ourselves, something we can force onto ourselves. Instead, the peace of God comes in our lives and it's kind of like a, a tower that you build. It's something that you experience more and more over time, the more and more you invest in it. So the more and more you make a habit of, of praying to God about your anxieties and fears, welcoming him into those situations and thanking him for the ways he had worked in the past, that pattern is going to continually, continually allow you to acknowledge the things God has done for you and open yourself up to the work that he has been doing in your life. And by the Holy Spirit, which lives inside all of us, he can continue to encourage you and bring you forward. So what I'm trying to say to you all is, when you have these signs of anxiety, when you have these times of fear, which many people, adults and students alike, are experiencing even with this current crisis we're in, expecting that right away as soon as we pray, all this peace is going to wash over and the, the trouble is going to be gone, it's just not realistic. But what God does do is when we invite him into those situations in our lives, he gives us the peace to know that he is with us and that he is working. And when we trust that and we believe that and we continue to believe that, we don't just say in the moment, yeah, okay, I, I trust you're doing something, God, so we're all good. But you continue to hold on to that. That tower of peace in your life gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And you continue to experience the peace of God that transcends all understanding, that works in your life to remind you that, you know what, the situation may not go away. The situation might still be hard, but God is working, and I can rest in that. And the anxiety that's coming at me, wanting to unsettle me, I don't have to listen to it because I know my God is in control and that he'll be with me. So that is why I think, going back to my point at the beginning, why Paul can tell us to do not be anxious about anything. It's a process. It's, it's done over time. It's, it's going to take our whole lifetime of continually trusting in God, presenting our requests to him. And the more and more we do that, we can press into his peace and know that he is working in our lives and in those things that we are anxious about. And a side note before I sign out is, when you are anxious, don't think that you only get one shot to pray about it. Like we, like I said earlier, God delights to hear your prayers. So anytime you feel anxious about the same thing over and over and over again, don't be ashamed to bring that right back up to God. Say, God, I know I prayed about this literally 10 seconds ago, but man, I'm so anxious about this and I trust you with it. I'm just going to lift this back up into your hands. God delights in hearing all of us. So I'm going to pray for us and then I will sign out. So let's pray. God, we are come to you today, Lord, with our anxieties, whether we're anxious about our health, 
health of our family members, um, the health of this nation and all that's going on around us with, with school and everything else, God. We're anxious and we don't know what's going to happen, whether it be with activities or the future or anything, God. We're, we're, we're nervous and we're anxious. But God, we come to you and we lift these things up to you and we thank you, Lord, for the ways that you have worked in the past in our lives. Lord, when there's been hard situations or uncertainty, God, that you have worked and that you have proven yourself to be good and that you love us. And Lord, we trust that you will continue to prove that, Lord, in our lives, God. Lord, we pray that the tower of your peace in our lives would continue to be built upon and that we press into it and enjoy the fact of trusting that you were in control and that you were with us and we can face the things of today by your power and in your strength. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray, the one who has saved us and given us new life. Amen. All right, my computer turned off. Hopefully we're still good. Yes, we are. All right, Cove Nation, I will see you all next week.